Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Teacher Luke and I'm your Pinay IELTS teacher. Today we are going to talk about your IELTS general training, Writing Task 1. And as you all know, Writing Task 1 is all about writing your letters. So let's begin. How are you being graded with your writing task? You have to be familiar with the four factors that they're considering before they give you your overall band score. Well, first, you're be going to be graded with your task achievement, okay? Next is your coherence and cohesion. Third is your grammatical range and accuracy. And fourth is your lexical resource. So if you tune in in this channel, I will be uploading another video that goes into details what are these different scoring rubrics. But for now, task achievement, well, as the word words imply, it's um, checking that you were able to answer all that is being asked on that letter. So you're going to be given a task card. Were you able to write everything that they asked you to write? And that falls under a task achievement. Another thing is they always give you a minimum number of words to write. So you have to be able to reach that a minimum number of words so that you won't be graded uh, with a low score on your task achievement. Next is your coherence and cohesion. This is all about from the word coherence is how well you've put up your um, your writing in such a manner that it's organized, fully structured, and connected with one another. So were your ideas um, flowing in a smooth manner? You know, uh, did they have enough linking or connecting words that would connect one idea to another? So that's all about coherence and cohesion. Third, your grammatical range and accuracy. So uh, the root word grammar, it's all about the rules in the English language. You know, um, use of your singular or plural, uh, your past tense, your future tense, are they all accurate? That's what you call the grammatical accuracy. However, with the range, this is a different manner. We're talking about your use of other complex sentence structures, wide range, such as you go from simple sentence structure to compound and then to complex. So you have to be able to show in your writing that you are able to have variations in your writing, okay? Second kind of range that they're looking for is your grammar tenses. Were you able to write um, something in the past tense and then would shift towards future tense, if there is an idea that you want to add in your writing that says something about a future. So you got to be able to be, um, what do you call this, flexible in terms of your grammar tenses and your sentence structure. All right. And the last scoring rubric is your lexical resource. If you watch my other videos, especially in the speaking part, you know that lexical resource um, is another way of saying your vocabulary. Were you able to use words that are related to the topic? higher levels uh, English words that could support the ideas that you want to share, you want to speak about, or you want to write in your IELTS test, all right? So again, I will be uploading a separate video that goes into details about this scoring rubric. But today, we just want to find out what is the letter writing about, what's the writing test one of your general training test. So this is your writing task one. You are ideally given 20 minutes to complete this task. And within the 20 minutes, you should be able to write 150 words, okay? At least, that's the minimum number of words. Now, you want to go more than that uh, just because you'll never know if some of the words that you wrote could be omitted from the number of words that they compute on your writing. Um and you don't also want to go more than 200 words because technically that would take so much time. Um, it's not true that the more words you write, the better is your result. Sometimes the more words you write, the more errors there will be. So it's best to keep your ideas concise, your letter uh, straightforward, uh, as long as you were able to write all the tasks that, was, uh, that were being asked of you and uh, that you were able to give sort of like 160 to 180 words, then you're on a good path, okay? What are the type of letters that could be asked from you to write on your writing task one? We have the informal letter, the semi-formal letter, or the formal letter. So you only will be writing one type on the day of your test. However, you need to have the skill to be able to determine what type of letter you will be writing, okay? However, regardless of the type of letters that you'll be writing, these are the different tasks 
that you could um, encounter on the test day. Some cue cards or task card will ask you to uh, write a letter that would give or ask for information, give or ask for opinion, express a like or dislike. So say, for example, you will be writing to a manager regarding a particularly a particular product or service that you didn't like. You had a terrible experience. Okay. Uh, same is true with filing a complaint. So these are like scenarios that they could give you on your writing task. And you should be able to write 150 words minimum within that 20 minutes. All right. Here is a ta sample task card. So this is how it really looks like on your test day. This is how it looks like exactly. Um, so a sample task card would have uh, your instructions. Uh, you should spend about 20 minutes on this task. Write at least 150 words. You do not need to write any addresses. Begin your letter as follows. So these are like the specific instructions that you should do within that 20 minutes. And then your actual task is the one that's inside the box. So let's read it. It says, a friend of yours is thinking of going on a camping holiday for the first time this summer. He or she has asked for your advice. Write a letter to your friend in your letter. Explain why you think your friend would enjoy a camping holiday. Describe some possible disadvantages and say whether you would like to go camping with your friend this summer. Okay, so if this is your given cue card, you are expected to be able to write all of these things in that letter. And that falls under your task achievement, okay? So to be able to complete all the tasks given to you within that time and the limit of words, that all falls down into your task achievement. The rest of your scoring card, um, like lexical resource, grammar range and vocabulary, coherence and cohesiveness, that falls under the quality of your writing. And we will go through that in another time, okay? Here is a model example or answer to that task cue card. So this is just showing you what a letter looks like. So, dear Amara, how have you been? It's been a long time and I've missed you. I'm writing back about the camping trip you mentioned in your letter. I think it's a wonderful idea for you to go camping in Baguio this summer since it's one of the best places to relax and be one with nature. Indeed, the mountaintop provides a breathtaking view and amazing scenery. You'll definitely love it. Although it's safe, I'm afraid that the weather conditions will vary, so make sure to bring with you your rainy weather outfit. I must warn you that we had a terrible mosquito experience before, so bag along with you some insect repellent. I also heard there won't be any electrical supply, so just bring your power bank for your gadgets. As much as I'd really love to come with you, I'm waiting for my internship this summer. The company provides high wages and benefits to incoming neophytes. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I hope you push through with this trip. Write to me all about it, okay? All the best, Maria. Okay? So this is an example of a letter written as in response to that cue card that was given earlier. Okay, and as you can see, it is well structured. So you have your greeting, you have sort of like your introduction, okay? And this three points are your three bullet points within your given task card, okay? One, two, and three. And this would be your closing greeting, okay? And this is your farewell or your name as well. Okay, so this is a good example of what type or how you should be writing your letter on your test date. Okay, how are you going to be graded? As I've mentioned that you have four areas where you will be graded on your writing task one. So I made this um, color uh, legends as well as uh, you would see some of the phrases or sentences or clauses are underlined there for you to uh, determine how are you being graded on your IELTS writing. So all that's underlined are compound and complex sentence structures, okay? I think it's a wonderful idea for you to go camping in Baguio this summer since it's one of the best places to relax and be one with nature. Okay, um, I will be discussing, as I've said earlier, I will be discussing how to be able to get these different scoring rubrics, how to be able to get a high score with them. But this is just an idea 
what are the elements in your letter that would make you have a high band score? So of course, they'll be looking more about more for compound and complex sentence structures. All right, the red are the conjunctions. And in another video, I'll be explaining what conjunctions are in connection to compound and complex sentence structures. Uh, the green words or phrases show your varying tenses of verb. Have you been? Okay, I have missed you. Will vary. We had. I would really love. So these types of phrases show you that these are past tense, past present tense, future tense, or most of them are occurring in um, present tense. So you don't really have to be uh, very knowledgeable of these various sentence structures, I mean grammar tenses. All you have to know is that you should be able to showcase a wide range or variety of grammar tenses in your letter. Okay, the blue words are transition words. And what are they? Let's look at them. You have indeed, also, as much as, anyway. Okay, so these transition words or connecting words, or some would even call it linking words, are words that you use in between two ideas just to ensure that there is a smooth transition or there is a connection between the two. Okay, these kinds of transition words are what they'd be looking for to give you a grade on your cohesive and cohesion aspect of the scoring rubric. Because words like this would make it look like your whole letter is very smooth, is very flowy, okay? The ideas are arranged structurally and uh, it presents an overall organized way of presenting your letter. And lastly, what are the orange words? These are lexical resources, your good vocabulary, good collocations, sometimes even idiomatic expressions. So let's look at some of the examples. Mountaintop, breathtaking view, scenery, okay? insect repellent, electrical supply, power bank, internship, benefits, high wages, neophytes, push through. Okay, push through is actually an example of a collocation. All right, I didn't see any idiomatic expression here. However, this just shows you that you're able to use vocabulary that um, is a bit higher level or it could support the related topic. Okay, so these factors are, are what they're going to look for to grade you on your writing task. I hope that's clear. Let's move on to how do we determine now what type of letter we need to write. Okay, by the way, this is a total number of word count. It's 179 words. Remember, I told you that we need to follow the minimum 150 words in order to have a good grade on your task achievement. So for this one, I just wanted to show that this type of letter already has 179 words. And I guess you're thinking right now, oh, this is a pretty short letter. I guess I could write a letter like this. And definitely, that should be the spirit, okay? If you start writing your letter, sometimes it's hard, but you'll realize that there are certain um, guides or strategies that will help you write it. In fact, if you tune in, my next video would actually be about how will you outline your letter? What is the guide that you need to follow? Basically, the parts and structure of the letter to help you write it within the given 20 minutes. In fact, if you get the hang of it, you, I think you, can, you could be able to finish a letter within 10 to 15 minutes. All right. So moving on, how do you decide now uh, what letter to write or what's the tone of the letter? Remember, I told you we have three types of letter, the formal, the informal, and the semi-formal. So now, how do we know which type of letter you'll be writing? Uh, the answer to that is it depends on who you write to, okay? It does not depend on the content. It depends on who you are writing to. So the question you have to ask once you see that cue card on a test day is, you have to ask, do you often meet this person that you're going to write to? Okay. If this is someone you never met before, then you'll definitely write a formal letter. 
Okay, say for example, you're writing to a manager of a different company, a director of a museum, a chairman for a government institution. This person is someone you've never met before. You don't have a direct relationship, a direct um, connection or contact. Then the type of letter you need to write is a formal letter. All right, I hope this is clear. Next is if you do meet this person, you have to ask next, do you have an emotional bond? So if the answer is no, then you will be writing a semi-formal letter. What does that mean? Yes, you meet this person often. Say, for example, your boss from work or your teacher from school. And do you have an emotional bond? Of course not. You still have that sort of respect and professionalism in the workplace or at school. So even though you meet this person regularly or you know this person, you don't really hang out. You don't really talk about personal things. So the type of letter you'll be writing to this person is a semi-formal letter. And lastly, if you do meet this person often and you do share an emotional bond or a personal relationship, then the type of letter you'll be writing is your informal letter. Example, if you will be writing to a childhood friend, um, your close circle, your family, your relatives. So you definitely need to write an informal letter. So again, I would need to reiterate that it always depends on who you write, no matter what the content is. All right. So I hope that gives you a clear guide, sort of like a schematic diagram that will help you gauge once you see the cue card on your test date. Okay, you have to ask yourself, Say, for example, the cue card is write a letter to your manager and asking him for a for a um, vacation leave, something like that. So you'd be asking yourself, do I meet this person often? Yes, because he's my manager. Do we have an emotional bond? No. So the type of letter I need to be writing is a same semi-formal letter. Okay. So again, just to put an emphasis on it. It depends on who you write, regardless of the purpose or content. So these are examples. I've already mentioned it to you earlier. So this should give you a hint what type of letters in every um, cue card or in specific scenario or circumstances given in your cue card. So we will have a short activity today. I will be, hold on, I'll just click out my pointer. Okay, so I will be showing you this letter and you have 20 seconds to guess if it's an informal, formal, or semi-formal letter. Okay, so your timer starts now. All right, time's up. Let's hear it. What do you guys have in mind? Well, I think you guessed it right. It's a formal letter. And why is it? Look at the greeting. Look at the farewell, okay? Dear sir or madam, that sounds too professional, okay? Sincerely yours and the full name as well. So, as you've guessed it, these are the certain elements in your formal letter. And as I've mentioned, we will I will be uploading particular videos that I will be going into deep on the different kinds of letters. Okay? Just this is just for you to have a glimpse of the elements of a formal letter. All right. So for those of you who guess it right, good job. And this is our next activity. You have another. 20 seconds to guess what type of letter this is. Time is up. Let's hear it. What do you have in mind? Okay. I know you probably guessed it right already, so I just click it right away. It's an informal letter. Why is that? Look at the greeting. It didn't even say sir or madam. There was not even a last name on it, so it's just the first name. 
and then look at the farewell is also first name basis and then i'd like to point out these some little uh, words that i put a box in here these are what we call contractions so usually you would say how have you been instead you say how have you been Instead of saying, I am writing back about the camping trip, you said, I'm writing back. So shortening or contracting two words into one is one of the elements of an informal letter. And please know from this point on that in your semi-formal or your formal letter, you are not allowed to contract any words. All right. However, in your informal letter, this is definitely required. You'll be expected I'm sorry, you'll be expected to write more of these contracted words because it shows a more personal, more casual type of writing. Okay, I'll give you 20 seconds to guess what type of letter this is. Time's up, guys. Well, it's kind of like obvious, but for you who honestly answered it as a semi-formal letter, then you got it right. So this is a bit tricky. What's really tricky is the difference between a formal and semi-formal letter because um, both of them do not use contractions. Both of them, you do use full names in your farewell. Okay, however, the big difference is your greeting, your common greeting or your opening greeting. In the formal letter, it's always dear ma'am or dear sir or madam. However, on the semi-formal letter, it's always dear and then miss or mister. And then the last name of the person you're writing to. So that is the difference. Because remember earlier I told you, semi-formal letter is for a person you meet, you know, but you do not have an emotional bond with. So because you know this person, it's suspected that in your greeting for the letter, you should be able to put the name of the person there. All right? However, I'd like to point it earlier. Um... As I've said, we're going down to the details of each of these letters. I'll be uploading separate videos for them. However, I need you to know right at this point that the semi-formal letter is a lot like the formal letter. It's not a midway between informal and formal. Semi-formal and formal are essentially the same. Okay, So informal is what's uh, a, a little bit different from the two. The only difference with the semi-formal, you know, the person you're writing to, all right? But the general tone, the choice of words are always um, geared towards a more professional, a more formal um, approach, okay? Unlike in the informal letter, as you've seen in the letter example a while ago, it's a lot more friendlier, more casual, more, more personal in general, okay? All right, so since on the day of the test, you won't be um, looking at the letter and guessing the tone, you'll actually be given a task card, or this is your, your questionnaire, okay? So right off the bat, as soon as you read your questionnaire, you must be able to identify the tone that you're going to use or the type of letter that you'll be writing, okay? So for this one, I will give you 20 seconds as a challenge to guess what type of letter you will be writing. Okay, time's up, guys. It is a formal letter, okay? I hope you guessed that one right. The reason for that is we are writing to your museum director. So you got to ask yourself, remember the steps? Is this person I meet often? Well, based on the cue card, nope. You don't meet the museum director often. So it's definitely a formal letter, Okay. So, to save you time, you do not need to read the whole task card at first to be able to guess what tone of letter you need to write. You only need to 
look at who you're writing to in order for you to know what type of tone you'll be using throughout the entire duration of you writing a letter. Moving forward, what type of letter will you be writing for this one? Time is up, guys. So if you guessed it right, it is an informal letter. And the reason being is because you are writing to your friend. All right. So you already know informal letter talks about um, writings to someone you have a personal connection with or an emotional bond with. Okay. All right. And lastly, what type of letter should you write with this? Okay, time's up, guys. And the last type of letter. Of course, it's a semi-formal letter. Why? Look at the task card. You work for an international company, um, and then you're going to write a letter to your manager. So even if this is someone higher than you, you don't have a direct relationship, you still know this person. So it's not entirely a formal letter. This is someone that you work directly for, your supervisor or your manager. All right? So I hope that with this, uh, with these exercises, you're able to now gauge which type of letter or tone you should be using when you're writing your general training, writing task one, okay? So let's look at the different types of letter. So for the informal letter, as I've said, and as you've seen in the example a while ago, you don't uh, use too much lengthy formal words, you'd like to contract them, okay? So I'm going to use my pointer for this one. Okay, so you'll be, instead of saying I have, you'd be saying I've. Instead of saying you are, you'll be using your, all right? And your icebreaker statements, now this is something unique only for the informal letter, okay? You say, hi there, how are you? I've missed you a lot. So these statements add personal touches to your letter. It establishes rapport. It establishes that you know and you have a, you know this person you're writing to and you indeed you indeed have a personal bond. Okay? Now for the voice, you want to use the active voice. You are the doer of the action. It's, so it's a lot about using I I okay, you are the doer of the action. So you say, I've been meaning to call you, but I was too busy with work. So this kind of um, sentence structure really shows a very casual approach. I want to call you. I've missed you. I want to invite you for a birthday party. So it all sounds a very uh, informal for the lack of uh, another word to use. All right. And your common greeting or your opening greeting is always a first name basis only. You don't say, Dear Susan uh, McGregor. You only say, Dear Susan. All right. For the farewell or, or closing, it's always in a casual manner. So you could choose between your friend, hope to speak to you soon, best regards, all the best, your bestie, your favorite friend, your favorite cousin, your only child. All right. So you could be very personal on your farewell or closing. And that's the element of your informal letter. Again, if you tune in in my channel, if you subscribe and you click that notification bell, I will be uploading an entire video dedicated only to writing your informal letter. We will go through the structure, the outline, and we are going to write and answer a cue card live. All right. I will show you how I do it, how I write my outline, how I write the letter within that given 20 minutes. All right. So next type of letter is your formal letter. Your formal letter never uses any contractions. You always have to spell out the words. So I hope this is clear. 
Okay, um, we never ever also use slangs or idioms because we want to be professional in our approach. Okay, we use the passive voice because we want to be, as I've said, we want to be professional. We want to be at our best um, presentation of ourselves, even if it's just through a letter. So using the passive voice means that it's always the third person point of view. Instead of saying, I will finish the project tomorrow, you say the project will be finished tomorrow. And this is one of the difference between the informal and the formal letter. Uh, remember a while ago, I told you that the informal letter uses a lot of the active voice. Um, in this case, on your formal letter, we do not recommend the active voice as much as possible we want everything to be written on the third person point of view or your passive voice all right the common greeting is always dear, dear sir or madam please do not change this in fact on your cue card on your questionnaire the IELTS would even write it begin your letter as follows dear sir or madam so please do not change it anymore, okay? The closing is always very formal. Remember, if you uh, encountered any formal letters before, um, this is always how they start their closing. They write their closing, I mean. Thank you in advance for your consideration. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you for taking action in this matter. So it's always um, in a very professional approach. Same is true with your farewell. It's always either sincerely yours, yours faithfully, gratefully yours, respectfully yours, okay? So these are your um, recommended farewell. You don't ever use best regards or thanks or all the best. These are all, all farewells for the informal letter, okay? I hope that is clear. Lastly, your semi-formal letter. As I've told you earlier, the semi-formal letter is the same as the formal letter. It's not closer to the informal. It's closer to your formal letter. So the shift is towards a formal tone, but you can still add personal touches. When I mean personal touches, it does not mean casual or informal words. It just means it is able to establish that you know the person you're writing to. Okay? Um... However, even if there are personal touches, you are not allowed to use contractions and slangs because it's still almost the same as your formal letter. Now, your voice should generally be polite, but not too professional because you want to establish that you don't have that, um, what do you call this, that wall that you do not know the person you're talking about, okay? So say, for example, this, it has been months since I listed for the course. I hope I'd be granted a spot in the program. Sorry for this error. I hope I will be, okay, granted a spot in the program. So these are called the personal touches. I hope I will be granted. You don't write this kinds of um, statements in your formal letter because you don't know the person. But in this case, because it's a semi-formal letter, we are assuming that you're talking to your college professor, okay? So you're letting him know that it's been months since you listed and you hope you will be granted a spot in that program. So there is still that establishment that you know the person you are writing to. The common greeting is always, as I've said earlier, this is the common difference between your semi-formal and the formal. It's always dear plus Mr. and Miss and the last name. So for example, dear Mr. Adams, dear Mr. Green, okay, dear Miss Sampson, or dear Miss um, McGregor. Okay, so it's always dear Mr. and Miss plus the last name. So I hope that's clear. Your closing is almost the same as the formal letter. As I've said, the common greeting is the only difference. All right. So closing and farewell are the same with your formal letter. All right. So moving forward, what is the summary of the tips that you need to remember in writing the content of your letter? So you make sure that you exceed the minimum number of words. Remember, our minimum number of words is 150. So you want to go a little bit higher than that. You want to go 160 to 180 words. All right? 
Um, now, there are no score markdown. If you ever go more than 180, if you want to go 200, it's fine. It's just an advice that the longer that you write, the more errors there would be. And that could like be a markdown on other aspects of your scoring rubric. Another thing is it might take too much of your time because you have writing task two, which is your essay writing. And that is the lengthier part of your writing task. And that's a more difficult task to do. So you do not want want to eat up all the time from your writing task just so you could write a lengthy letter okay as long as like i said you were able to answer all the tasks that were given to you or you were able to execute them properly you were able to write all the details they're asking from you then you don't need to write something very very long all right now you have to use transition words to make your ideas cohesive remember i showed you a while ago like for example in addition indeed furthermore in conclusion so transition words like this are effective ways to make your letter more connected with one another the ideas in your letter i mean all right next you have to use relevant vocabulary idioms collocations sometimes idiomatic expressions especially in your um informal letter okay so we don't want too much idiomatic expressions on your semi-formal and formal because some of them really sound a bit casual okay so the important thing i want to point out is this is for your lexical resource you have to be able to use vocabulary related to the topic or at least higher level vocabulary that is appropriate to the given topic Please do not use memorized words or memorized, line, memorized lines. That will be a markdown. The, the people or the panel who, is, who are going to check your letter would know if that answer is memorized. It does not seem natural. And it would look like it's just been taken from somewhere and you just force fit it in your, uh, your letter or in what you wrote. So it's just best to have a wide, wide, sorry, it's just best to have a wide range of vocabulary when you are writing your letter. I'm sorry, sometimes my tongue is twisting when I talk. So bear with me on that. Please forgive me. Now, uh, last is using varying tenses of verbs and sentence structures. This is now for your grammatical range and accuracy. So again, I will go through each of these details, deta <laughs> details, details. In another video, and I hope you tune in because these are the ways that you can have a high band score on your letter. So, um, being able to know, being able to be knowledgeable of these different scoring rubrics, it's what's going to make you have that target score that you want. This was my approach in my writing test when I took it. Okay, I had to know what criteria they're going to look for. Uh, for a band 8 or band 9 material and once that you know that then you definitely have this guide to help you construct your letter because now you know that that's what they're looking for so please subscribe like share and also click on that notification bell so you will be notified if i upload these upcoming videos all right so that's the end of my topic. Thank you so much for watching. This is again Pinay Al's teacher. I am teacher Luke, your Pinay Al's teacher. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I will be uploading more videos, tutorials, lectures, discussions, mock tests, all right, or um, feedback sessions with some of my clients, all right. So also practice videos in the speaking part. And also we'll have live writing sessions. So please tune in a lot of good materials that are free for you to watch to help you in your preparation for the IELTS test, all right. So thank you so much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.